What's up guys? My name is Vibes. So grab some snacks. Hurry. Don't forget to stay hydrated. Oh, hi, Dill. Yeah, I'm gonna be learning how to speedrun a hat in time today. Um, but first, I got some bad news. I had to factory reset my um, my computer the other day. So that sucks. So now, I, and I didn't have time to set up OBS before I had to stream, so, yeah. You guys are gonna have to deal with me fixing all the stream stuff before I, um, actually can stream <sighs> but yeah So, today's stream will be kind of scuffed, but we'll make it work. But yeah, we're gonna be watching the world record run and seeing what we can do to like Oh yeah, auto cutscenes dipped. Right, yeah. Maybe we could just do that and skip this whole portion of the level. Actually, did that in my. Yeah, they grab the wall here. Grab the wall there. And then just kill them off. How did they do that that quickly? I doubt doing that saves them. Like, what the heck? There might be a guide for this game. Yeah. There there most definitely is. Just wanna watch the world record run to um before I begin like, learning the game. Perfect. I wanna see what I'll have to be able to do. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, in this level there are specific trigger points you need to hit for the Mafia to progress. That's the last trigger point, so we can just wait at the end of the game. It's the timepiece gallery. Let's see. They also can by IGT. Yeah, I know. I literally know that there's a speedrun time for this game. Do not think about avoiding perils. Heads up, little punk. I love how this mafia guy is just kind of be all intimidating. She can't can hit this kid, even though she's standing literally directly in front of him. We're gonna move around. Okay. Oh yeah, fun fact, if you actually press both buttons in this level before activating the flash glow, you actually can't progress the level. Oh, minimum graphic settings to have the game run. Huh? Oh, hat lag. Yeah. <laughs> the sawed off. That allows you to skip the Mafia Guard. Oh yeah, I guess the Honey does Supercharge! Yeah. I didn't know you could hit him in such a time. I don't know if you can hit him in such a time. I don't know if you can Supercharge! I guess that's so cool. Just been inherited. Like, yeah. 
I know, I knew it was possible to like... Huh? Okay, like, I knew it was possible to get in front and the behind of the stage, but like... I only managed to do it once and that was because of lucky glitches. Yo, it's my favorite level in the game. Let's go. Turn up my mic. Uh, sure. There is. Is that better? Is that better? Oh yeah, fun fact. Um Fun fact. In this sequence here, you actually can get soft locked if you stand in the wrong place. It doesn't have any correction for if you stand in the wrong place. It just soft locks you. Oh yeah, there's actually a program called Hacklag that's specifically that's specifically made to lag the game. And there's a train outside of my window. It just zooms in on nothing. <laughs> Wait, this is like below minimum graphics setting. No sense that you can do that. That jump, I mean, not below minimum graphics. You can jump. Extremely far in this game. Oh, well, that was quick. How? How did what? You know what, it's time to 
fantastic guide. Welcome to episode 5 of How to Speedrun Anything. In this episode, we're looking at a hat in times any percent category. The game was developed by Gears for Breakfast, smashed its Kickstarter goal, and was released in October 2017. It can be found on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and the Switch, though for the purpose of the speedrun, we'll be looking at the PC version. I'll get to why in a bit. The any percent category has 516 runs, the world record is 35 minutes, 12.85 seconds by does this username, the median time is roughly 57 minutes and 45 seconds, and a 37 minute 37 second time is required for top 10. I've run this game in the past a few years ago, and my PB when I started relearning is a 50 minute and 33 second time. My goal time for this category will be a 45 minute time or better. The main reason that we'll be running on the PC version is because of the ability to use an older version of the game. The most optimal patch for this category is DLC 2.1, compared to the current patch which is DLC 2.2. This version contains some tricks and glitches that have since been patched out, so primarily glitches that involve the boop emote. To access it on Steam, right click the game, select properties, go to the beta tab, then select the version named DLC. Wait, how? Right click the game, select properties. So on Steam, right, right click the game, properties, betas, properties, uh, go to the beta tab, then select the version named DLC2 underscore May 1.1. DLC two underscore nine one one. Ruined save data. Oh. Well, I kind of don't want to lose all my save data. Uh. I I really do not want to lose my save data because it's like I spent a ton of time when trying to one hundred percent the game, so yeah, I guess I won't be speedrunning a hat in time unless I get like a new like Steam account or some. Wait, no, I have an extra Steam account that has this game, don't I? Uh... I don't remember the login details anymore though. Heck. Once that's downloaded, open up the game and go into settings. Now let's just continue watching this to see if maybe it does if, like, if you don't access a new save file, it doesn't ruin your save. There are a few required settings to change, and some optional ones that will improve quality of life. First, set the speedrun timer to on. This is required for any submitted run. Next, check auto skip skippable cutscenes. This isn't required, but it saves a good amount of time in the run. Next, scroll to the bottom and check no saving and disable mods, as well as making sure developer console is unchecked. You can also change the camera smoothing option above to medium if you'd like, as well as unchecking camera assist and camera shake above that. These just make moving the camera easier. Back out of the menu and move into graphics settings. 
The only required setting here is to set the maximum frame rate to 60 FPS. You may also want to set global visual quality to performance or high performance, as these lead to better cycles in the finale. You may also want to go into the advanced graphics settings and uncheck the predictive traced camera, as that can lead to some awkward zooming around walls. Finally, in the input settings, uncheck hold backwards to cancel diving. This also isn't required, but helps prevent accidental dive cancels. You can change any other setting as you prefer. Runners of the game tend to prefer using controller as their main input method, but others use keyboard, so use whatever is most comfortable for you. If you are using a controller, you'll be using the keyboard and mouse for some things later on, so keep that in mind. Another thing to mention here is mashing through text. There are a few ways to mash through text. Typically, it'll be the X, A, and B button on something like an Xbox controller, or both mouse buttons. You can also utilize a bug that allows for near-instant text mashing through the use of an interaction with the scroll wheel. To do this, go to the keyboard.ini file found in the Hat in Time Game config gamepads folder where your installation is, then add this line to the entry under hat underscore menu underscore cancel, button ID equals 256, while also keeping the one that says button ID equals 2. Now you can just hold the right click button and get through text very quickly. This might be a little uncomfortable for controller players, as you'll need to swap between using the controller and using the mouse, but it saves a few seconds throughout the run if done correctly, as well as saving your hands from having to mash buttons that much. There is one more thing to do before getting started running, and that's installing a timer fix, which fixes some hardware inconsistencies with the in-game timer. To do this, install the zip file linked on the game's resource page at unspeedrun.com or in the description, navigate to your Hat and Times install folder, Go into the Hat in Time game folder, then Cooked PC, put all of the files that were in the zip archive here, then run apply.bat. With that, all of the setup is complete. There is a more in-depth setup guide by Doka that will be linked in the description as well. The game also features an auto splitter that splits on every timepiece obtained, so there isn't too much setup for that, other than having one split per timepiece in the route. As this is a beginner tutorial, the easiest route and tricks will be used. It's possible to clip through walls and do other things by inducing lag into the game through an external program and keybind, but strats using lag like this will not be included here for simplicity. The Boop Troop, or the Hat in Time community, is a fantastic resource for getting help with the run or learning about new things within the game. They're all great people and super helpful. A link to their Discord is in the description. Before finally getting into the game, the main resource that I use to learn the category and the route that I'll be using in this video comes from a huge document containing links to guides for every timepiece obtained. This is a great place to look if you're having difficulty on any particular timepiece. A link to that is also in the description. It also contains links to the Boop Troop Discord, the setup guide mentioned earlier, and some other tutorials. I highly recommend using that guide as well. Now that we're finally in the game, there are a few techniques to cover. The first few are super simple, starting with dive boosting. All you have to do to dive boost is press the dive yep. button when you hit the ground after a dive. dive you can also easy. dive boost with the jump button, but it is slightly slower. This will get you more speed on the ground, and you can chain a ton of these together by diving right after the dive boost to get where you need to go. This is faster is than the so sprint hat alone. The next is teching. If you fall from a big height, you can speed up the animation of hitting the ground by pressing jump during it. You'll do a bit of a recovery oh. roll and get up faster. The next tech is the double sprint jump. To do it, yep. just press yep. jump twice quickly after sprinting off a ledge using the sprint hat while still holding the sprint button. If done correctly, you'll get two of the sprint hat's animations. This is honestly a very easy technique. Once you get it a few times, you'll recognize the timing and get it a lot easier. Okay. This is Here. where we... N never mind, actually. Never mind. There are any areas in this route where this is absolutely required, but it helps quite a bit in some sections. I'll refer to this as a DSJ from now on. It is also possible to get a triple sprint jump by letting go of the sprint button during your two jumps. This will give you an extra mid-air jump to use. This also isn't used in this route, but there might be a few cases where it's better to do this. Finally, the sprint double jump or SDJ, not to be confused with the DSJ. This technique is done by jumping on the ground within the first few frames of stopping your sprint. This will allow you to do two regular jumps in the air, but with the same speed as a sprint. This also isn't required anywhere, but is helpful for covering large gaps faster than a double jump and a dive would. There's also one other main trick to cover, but I'll explain that when we get there. Now, finally, we can get into the game. Starting out, select a new file. It doesn't matter if you use Hat Kid or Bow Kid, as there's no difference between them. 
Once you gain control, dive boost through the tunnel and jump up left after exiting the second door. Yeah. Press the interact button, B on an Xbox controller or E on the keyboard, and get to the next part. Once the camera turns around and you regain control, jump in. Okay, so I have the game loaded up, but because it's not in the right version, I'm not going to actually open it. Hold on, actually. Wait, so if I use this, will I not have work? Hold on. Shut up. my mouse not working dive boost towards the bottom right of where you're standing dive boost again into the beginning of the first act welcome to mafia town upon loading in you'll want to climb up the right wall behind you from here, you can go between the wall and wooden beam to jump up across the gap where the chest is. Open the chest and get your first yarn. Going around the corner, jump over the gap into the main area. You can dive on the sloped wooden platform and stay in the diving state to get a bit more momentum. Get the next yarn. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna get the login stuff for my old Steam account so I don't have to ruin my save date on the current one, but still can speedrun this game. I'm going to be right back.
Hello, I'm back. Oh, hey Maglor. We were just... I'm learning how to speedrun a hat in time. And I just got... And I just found the credentials for my old Steam account. So... I'm gonna quickly... Log into that. Hello, Steam, please. Please let me log out of my account. Yes, okay, we've logged out. Now we need to wait for Steam to load. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna be right back again. I need to get another thing.
Hello, I'm back. Emoji Maker, how did you want to still have access to your current patch saves? You should be able to. You should watch Doka's setup guide mainly for down patching the game and to easily launch multiple versions. Okay. I'll do that, but I'll do that later because I just got my old Steam account. Ah, uh, you know what, uh, I'm just gonna do it now, so I don't have to do this in the future. Thank you. So it's in resources, right? It's in guides. Oh, okay. Uh, the is it the setup guide? Yes, it is. Okay. Want to speedrun a hat in time, but don't know how to start or get set up? Well, you've come to the right place. This is going to be a more comprehensible and complete guide for setting up a hat in time for speedruns. Please note that while everything done in the setup is highly recommended, none of it is required except for a few in-game settings I'll show. Timestamps will also be available to help you navigate the video as well as links in case you're having trouble finding any of the resources used in this video. So to start, the first thing you'll want to do is to downgrade your game to the fastest version for whichever category you want to run. You can do this easily by right clicking a hat in time in your Steam library, clicking on pro- Oh! Emoji Maker, thanks for the follow I just now noticed. Thanks for the follow. Properties, then navigating to the betas tab. Here is where you can download most relevant versions of the game. For any percent in every all time pieces category, you'll want to pick DLC2 underscore May 11. So just click that. And Steam will begin to download that version of the game. Hold up. Uh... Steam library, clicking on properties, and then navigating to the betas tab. Here is where you can download most relevant versions of the game. For any percent in every all time pieces category, you'll want to pick DLC2 underscore May 11. So just click that and Steam will begin to download that version of the game. Oh, it just auto does it. Okay. Once it's done, And now we have to wait a while. So just you want to launch the game, as you'll need to have a few like settings this. checked for your runs to be leaderboard valid. First off, you'll need both in-game timers enabled, which you can do in-game settings, it's near the very top. You'll also want to enable the auto-skip skippable cutscenes option, as it's very useful for runs. Yeah, that makes sense. you also want to make sure that your FPS is capped at 60. So those are all the essential settings that are required, well, except for skip skippable cutscenes, but you're going to want to have that on. However, I am going to show a few more that just make the game better to play. So the first of these settings you want to turn off is camera assist, which moves your camera for you, and camera shake, which is just annoying. Next, you want to turn off hold backwards to cancel diving and input settings, Lastly, you'll want to turn off Predictive Trace Camera, as this setting is what causes the camera to zoom really close into Hat Kid's head when you're like near certain walls. It's just a very annoying setting that's really hidden in menus. You'll definitely want it off. That's pretty much it for settings. Now it's time to move on to the Run Essentials. 
So the run essentials, being hat lag and timer fix, can either be found on the Boop Troop Discord's resources channel, or on the resources page of a hat and time speedrun.com page. So once you have them downloaded, we'll need to install them. Let's begin with timer fix. To do this, we need to get into our game files. However, this is very simple. We just right click hat and time in our Steam libraries once again, navigate to the local files tab, and then click browse local files. Once you're there, you're going to want to open up your speedrun utility zip or your timer fix zip, either one. And then on your hat and time folder, you're going to want to navigate into hat and time game and then into the cooked PC folder. So then back into the timer fix zip, you're going to want to drag all the files in the 2.1 or above folder, since this is 2.1, into the cooked PC folder and then just run the apply.bat and then you let it do its thing and that's it. You should have timer fix. Hmm. You can test this in game by just starting a new file and seeing if your timer starts at 4 seconds instead of 5. If it starts at 4, you'll know you have timer fixed installed. As for hat lag, it's pretty self-explanatory to use. You can just drag it out of the zip anywhere you'd like and then double click it to open it and then it'll just wait for the game to open. Once in game, you can check if this works. Oh, I should probably... Um... I ever like move this or make it smaller? Um, let's move it down here for now. By just pressing R or right shift. If you want to set this up on controller, it's pretty easy. You can just use Steam's built-in controller functionality by going to Steam settings under controller and then turning on configurability for whatever controller type you're using in the general controller settings. Once that's done, you can just right click your hat in your Steam library, go to manage and then click controller configuration. And here in this window, you can pretty much set the button right shift on controllers to whatever you want. But you do have to make sure it's right shift or the lag won't work properly on controller. I actually didn't know you could customize I do want to settings. mention that there is an alternative to this if you don't want to use this functionality. Many runners already use a program called Anti-Micro, which basically does the same thing that this accomplishes, and it is allowed. So if you don't want to do this, you can use Anti-Micro instead. So at this point, you're pretty much ready to run and can stop here if you want, as everything from here on out won't affect anything to do with actually playing the game. However, I am going to show a few more things that you'll probably want to do just to make life a bit easier. So first, I'm going to show how to manage and launch multiple versions of the game without having to rename a bunch of stuff every time you want to do so. If you just downgraded from current patch, for example, but still want to have access to that patch, you want to navigate to your Steam app slash common folder, which you can get to pretty easily from the browse local files button we used earlier. Then you're just going to want to rename your hat and time folder to literally anything else, since Steam will only launch from whatever is named hat and time. Then you want to go to your betas tab and opt out and current patch will begin re-downloading. Oh. That's nice. Once you have both of your versions downloaded, you can make a new text document called Steam underscore app ID. And then all you'll want to do is to enter these numbers shown on screen into the document and then save it. Once done, you'll want to copy this file into the binary slash win64 folder of both of your hat versions. The path to that being shown on screen now. After that, you'll just be able to make shortcuts of the executable wherever you want and it'll launch that version of the game. Hmm. The last thing I'll cover is how to set up the auto splitter and sync live split to the in-game timer. So all you need to do to activate it is to right click live split and then click edit splits. And then in this window, under game name, type out a hat until you see a hat and time pop up in the drop down menu. And click that and then click the activate button that appears right below your attempt counter. 
And then to get live split to sync with the in-game timer, simply right click live split and then go under compare against and then click game time and that's all you have to do. Hmm. Well that about covers everything you need. Links will be in the description in case you're having trouble finding anything mentioned in the video. If you have any questions about anything, you can ask in the comments below or in the Boop Troop Discord, and I'll try and do my best to answer them. Until then, have fun running! It's hmm. pretty good. So let's get back to the guide. So I am starting up the game right now. Hmm. Let's quickly go over to the required settings part. Once it's done, you'll want to launch the game as you'll need So I have the thing in picture in picture mode so that I can have the game open and running while doing the other stuff. I hope it works. Cause like if it doesn't, that sucks. Okay, it's the launching process is on step eight of eight. So it should be launching soon. Ah. Soon, also known as literally right now. Oh, you gotta go, Dill? Okay. I probably will have fun. Thank you. I'll see you next time. settings I want are. Two settings checked for your runs to be leaderboard valid. First off, you'll need both in-game timers enabled, which you can do in-game settings, it's near the very top. You'll also want to enable the auto-skip skippable cutscenes option, as it's very useful for runs. You'll also want to make sure that your FPS is capped at 60. So those are all the essential settings that are required, no, except for yeah. skip skippable. Stop. Okay, where's the FPS cap? It's here. It is capped at 60. Okay. Cutscenes, but you're going to want to have that on. However, I am going to show a few more that just make the game better to play. 
So the first of these settings you want to turn off is camera assist, which moves your camera for you, and camera shake, which is just annoying. Okay, I'm, just, I'm gonna actually pull this tab over onto my second monitor. Next, you want to turn on... Skip skippable cutscenes, but you're going to want to have that on. However, I am going to show a few more that just make the game better to play. So the first of these settings you want to turn off is camera assist, which moves your camera for you, and camera shake, which is just annoying. Yep, already got that. Next, you want to turn off hold backwards to cancel diving and input settings. Okay. Lastly, you want to turn off predictive trace camera, as this setting is what causes the camera to zoom Wait, really close in the hat kid's head when you're like hold near. On. Where? It's just a very annoying setting that's really hidden in menus. You'll definitely want it off. That's pretty much it for settings. Now it's time to move on to the run essentials. So the run essentials, being hat lag and timer fix, can either be found on the boot. Okay, hat lag timer fix. I don't think I was supposed to download it with five bombs. and now it doesn't work. This sucks. Doesn't work. Okay, so here's what I do, right? I click on hat lag. It brings me to this. I assume I'm supposed to launch with Windows app. It just doesn't work. And if I try and it just doesn't work.
I am part of the Discord though, so I'll try and just dis and I'll try and just like download it from there. Okay. That should have worked. Page of a hat in time speedrun.com page. So once you have them downloaded, we'll need to install them. Let's begin with timer fix. To do this, we need to get into our game files. However, this is very simple. We just right click Hat and Time in our Steam libraries once again. Okay, so. Properties. Navigate to the local files tab and then click local files. Browse local files. Browse. <coughs> Once we're there, what do we do? Once you're there, you're going to want to open up your speedrun utility zip or your timer fix zip, either one. And then on your Hat and Time folder, you're going to want to navigate into Hat and Time game and then into the cooked PC folder. Okay, so. Uh, hat and Time, Hat and Time game, cooked PC. So then back into the timer fix zip, you're going to want to drag all the files in the 2.1 or above folder, since this is 2.1, into Essentials, ah, uh, yes. Hold on. I'm just going to put it in PIP. 2 the cook PC folder, and then... So, take all these... Files, put them into here. And just run the apply.bat, and then you let it do its thing, and that's it. You should have timer fix. Now, this is a lot of work for just speedrun, but meh, it's fine. You can test this in game by just starting a new file and seeing if your timer starts at 4 seconds instead of 5. Okay, so... Start up the game. If it starts at four instead of five, and don't worry, I'll be doing all those. 
stuff that makes it easier later, like, off-stream and on my main Steam account. Okay. It does work. R or right shift? As for hat lag, it's pretty self-explanatory to use. You can just drag it out of the zip anywhere you'd like and then double click it to- So I have to drag it out of the zip. But where the heck is it? Do I have to like... Do this? Open it and then it'll just wait. Just double click hat lag. Okay. So
Night Shift at the default. Okay. Whatever, let's test it to see if it works. So we start a new file. right now but nothing is happening and right shift is just the hat button it's not doing anything In game you can check if this Does works by just pressing R or right shift. Work. If you want to set this up on um, controller, um, it's pretty uh, easy. Share was off. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. But like, okay. let's load the game up again. So, right shift, huh? So let's go into this file. Pressing R, nothing happens. Right shift, nothing happens. Press J, okay, I press J, even after that, doesn't work. It just doesn't work. That's why the keybinds folder is broken. I don't think the keybinds thing is supposed to be this. Uh, I think it's broken. Do I go about fixing this? Uh, 
And what if we did you open the exe? This is what happens when I try and open the exe. If I do extract all, it says here. It says it'll go here. So we copy that. Then I'm gonna do this. Oh, the files are already there. Hmm, let's see. Let's see if the files are already there. Where? They're not here. They're not here. They're not here either. They are not here, not here, not here, can't open that, and oh look, they aren't in here. Practice tools, not in here. Not in here. Uh, they're probably not in there. <laughs> they're probably not in there. Uh, centrals. Hat lag. Where is it? It's gone. Oh, and where does it say it put them? We have we copied that. And then if we paste it, it, takes us to here. Where are they? Okay, well. What if I just click run? Oh, it doesn't work. So in short, it doesn't work. Make a folder on the desktop and make that where you want the files to go. Okay, new folder. Name it E. E. So the hat lag. Extract. Shut up. Browse. Desktop. E. Show the files. Okay, I'm in the folder. <clears throat> so... Where do you say it was? Because for some reason it's just this. This is apparent. This hat lag is apparently all of this stuff, which I doubt. If I go in the folder, it's empty. Power fix already done. Practice tools. Highly doubt it's in here, and I don't need that.
Not in here. Not in here. I'll end look. Not in here. So yeah, in short, it's not there. I'm just going to reopen all of these. these unzip the whole speed run utilities to itself uh, okay and then this one B we go to half lag So unzip it to itself, you say. So if I oh, so unzip the whole speedrun utilities. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, how do I unzip this? Hold on, I'm gonna quickly try something. What if I do this? Okay, yeah, I have I don't understand. You can just use Steam's built in anywhere you'd like and, not, and seeing if you're. And then just run the apply.bat and then you let it do its thing and that's it. You should have timer fix. You can test this in game by just starting a new file and seeing if your timer starts at 4 seconds instead of 5. If it starts at 4, you'll know you have timer fix installed. As for hat lag, it's pretty self-explanatory to use. You can just drag it out of the zip anywhere you'd like and then double click it to open it and then it'll just drag it out of the zip to anywhere you'd like. Okay. So right here. Where is it? So I drag it to desktop. It says copy to desktop. What the heck do you mean? I don't have permission.
I'm not showing you any more details. What if I skip? Ah, it works. But where is it? Where did it go? Hold on. for the game to open. Once in game, you can check if this worked by just pressing R or right shift. So check if it works by pressing R or right shift. Hmm, let's test if it works. At two bucks, it won't work. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Pressing right shift, nothing. I'm pressing R, nothing. Guess what? <laughs> I don't think it works. Just got a small little sneaking suspicion that it doesn't work. If you want to set this up on controller, it's pretty easy. You can just use Steam's built-in controller functionality by going to Steam settings under controller and then turning on configurability for whatever controller type and extract the folder. Okay, could you tell me how to do that? Cause I like, don't, I don't understand how. Extract all. Okay. Sure, let's replace the files. The heck you mean? Do that in the bigger folder. Uh, 
I don't see the. Sorry. Go to the temp folder that has the speedrun utilities in it. Okay. And extract the folder. How do I extract the folder if it's not compressed? Why is it not there? I don't un I don't know. All I can do is zip it but not extract it. So I have. S Can my mouse stop not working? So we select all. How the heck do I extract? I can compress it. Sure. Then I can re extract it. You're not helping, you'd recommend asking the. Okay. What did I just do? I want to try one more thing. So, zip all of it. Okay. Extract all. I assume I just ask in the this channel. Okay, well, I guess until, like, someone responds, we can just, like, watch the guide. To jump up across the gap where the chest is, open the chest and get your first yarn. Going around the corner, jump over the gap into the main area. 
You can dive on the sloped wooden platform and stay in the diving state to get a bit more momentum. Get the next yarn that's between some crates and move around the left side of the fountain. You'll want to collect the pawns here as they're the currency you need to open up new levels. You'll need to collect all five of them around the fountain before collecting the timepiece. After getting the three or four around the left side, move into the Mafia member. This will start the fight with him. Hold up and hit him three times, then once more to end the fight. During the timepiece spawning animation, you can craft your first hat, the Sprint Hat. Pause, move right to the hat menu, write twice to the Sprint Hat, make it, and unpause. You'll make the hat during the cutscene, not losing any time. Equip the hat out of the menu by pressing A, pick up any of the fountain pawns that you missed, and collect the first timepiece. Upon loading back into the spaceship, hold a bit of a down left angle and mash the interact button. This Hold up, what the heck happened to my bitrate? Why is it dying? What the heck? Hold on. What the heck is happening? I am back. We'll activate the Mafia Town telescope. You can use the boop emote during this cutscene, right as the camera snaps to the telescope and it begins to spawn. It'll effectively take priority of the animation Hat Kid is currently doing, and when it's done you'll be able to move during the cutscene. You won't have too much time, but you can make some ground towards the telescope. This is the case for all telescope cutscenes. Boop a bit after it starts and you'll be able to move, in this case straight down, and you can jump dive into the telescope. Even if you don't move towards the telescope, you can cancel the animation after the cutscene ends, saving a bit of time. Go to the telescope, activate it, and select the act above Welcome to Mafia Town. If you don't have enough pawns to activate it, reset the run and go again, as you'll be making an important hat before Barrel Battle, the other available act. You should also hold A or left click through every telescope cutscene, as it makes the animations play faster and saves a lot of time throughout the run. Entering the next act, She Came From Outer Space, follow the route shown. There isn't too much to say about this, other than that we'll be getting four yarn to make the next hat. Going into the mud here is important, as it's necessary to begin the last part of the act. Once you get up to the Mafia Goon, mash through the text. During the following cutscene, craft the Brewer Hat. This is used to make combat a lot faster than just the Umbrella. Press B after this so you don't equip it, and begin the next sequence. You can pick up the pawns the Mafia Goon drops with your Umbrella to get them all at once. 
Move all the way through the sequence, scaring the goon each time. You'll be able to get to the places faster than he is to trigger the scaring faster. It's worth noting that you can softlock after jumping from the pipes if you reach the Mafia goon too quickly, but if you take the bit of extra time and collect the pawns, you should rarely encounter this. Once you're at the end, you can jump above this intersection of planks so the timepiece spawns right on you. Oh, I didn't know that it was that that it was in an intersection of planks. That's cool. From now on, you can just dive into the telescope and activate it when you get to the carpet underneath it. This is a little bit faster than running directly up to it. Enter Barrel Battle. When you load in, double jump to the left wall, then jump to the right wall and vault over. It's worth mentioning here that when you'd single jump into a wall, you'll be able to double jump afterwards. This isn't used too often, but is very useful to keep in mind. Move towards the right and use your Brewer Hat ability to break the boxes containing a yarn. This yarn is very finicky with where it spawns and where you can collect it, so make sure you hear the collection noise before moving on. From here, just dive and dive boost towards where Mustache Girl is at the big barrel stack. The first two Mafia members are very simple to get rid of. Just throw a Brewer at them and hit until they're finished. When you move to the right to the third Mafia member, throw a Brewer, hit him three times, then throw another Brewer. Do this again for the fourth Mafia member. Mash through some text, then stand in front of one of the corner barrels as seen here. You'll be totally safe in this spot, so just hang out until the last barrel explodes. Yep. Mash through some more text and repeat the cycle of Brewer into hitting three times until the final member is finished. Move up the barrel stack and collect the timepiece. After you collect it, you can pause and exit to hub during the following cutscene. The next act is down with the Mafia. Jump into the cannon upon spawning, and mash through some text that appears when you land. Dive boost over to the Mafia members. If you line it up correctly, you can hit the two on the left with a single hit, though this is somewhat difficult. After you hit all of them, there's one more text box. Move towards the right button and stand on it. Once the other button gets pressed, move into the building. It's possible to get to this button before Mustache Girl does. If this happens, just step off the button and then go back to it. Once in the building, move to the right and jump on a chair, then the lamp, then right onto the rafters. Grab the bucket and move back towards the ground level. You can fall onto a lamp, then onto a Mafia member to make this a bit easier. After collecting the last pawn in the sequence of four, throw the bucket onto the button. Grab the key, move out, and dive boost over to the next door. You might want to grab some pawns on the way here, as you need a total of 150 on this route, but it's not that necessary as you'll get a bunch later. Get to the door where you need the key and move on. Move over to the left block and open the chest, getting a yarn. You can sprint jump dive or DSJ towards the ending block, then stand right up against the vent and dive through it. If you aren't standing right at the wall, you'll very likely bonk onto it. Move to the breakable blocks near where you- After we finish watching the guide, we're gonna go back for it step by step so I can actually learn how to do a basic speedrun. Land and get the next yarn. From here, we'll be skipping a cutscene and fight before the boss fight. Jump up the left side of the door frame and climb up a bit. From here, use the dive button to climb up the two surfaces on either side of you until you get to the top of the door frame. Jump over to the next door frame and slide down the wall until you land on it. Do the same for the next door, though you'll be aiming for some invisible geometry next to the chandelier. Dive towards the Mafia boss, making sure to leave some space between you and the chandelier where you're diving, as you can get stuck and trigger the fight if you miss it. Missing the skip isn't too bad of a time loss, as you're just fighting two Mafia members and waiting through a bit of a cutscene, though obviously it's better to get it. Once you begin the Mafia boss fight, he has a few attacks in the beginning. The first involves him spinning towards you. Just jump over and press the attack button to home in on and hit him. The next attack is Supercharge. The first time he does it, he'll spawn four electricity bolts on the floor, then become vulnerable. After this, you can hit him. If he does it again in the first phase, there will be five bolts before he's vulnerable. There are also some random times throughout the fight where he jumps into the crowd and spawns some sandbags for you to avoid. He's not vulnerable during or after this, so you just have to wait. After he goes into the background, he'll jump back towards you and you can hit him. Yep. It's basically a standard fight. After the second one of these, he'll begin the next phase. You should stand around the right side of the stage, near the feature sticking out in the foreground. The first attack he always does in this phase is the Mafia Ball. 
It's possible to climb up the Mafia Ball when it's forming to hit the boss faster, but if you miss it, just wait until you can climb up it normally. The other attacks in this phase are similar, though he can do an Ultra and Mega Charge instead of the Super Charge from before. Mega this is a bit of a longer attack, but is effectively the same as before. Once you finish the fight, jump towards the middle and collect the timepiece. Like Barrel Battle, exit to hub in the cutscene after you get it. After this, move towards the next chapter, Battle of the Birds. Like before, you can use the boop emote to get some ground on the telescope before the cutscene ends, this time holding right, then down right. In this telescope, you'll have one act available at the start, Dead Bird Studio. Entering the act, dive hey, boost towards the counter. The game. Jump on it, then double jump dive over to the loose duct covering. Open it, then move on. This act is fairly linear, so just move through the level following the route. You'll need to avoid the owl before jumping up to get the yarn here. When you dive boost into a sandbag seen here, or a balloon, you'll get a bunch of extra momentum as well. Oh, if you sprint jump cool. then dive towards the next part, you can checkpoint abuse and spawn later in the level without having to take the cart. Open the chest for the next yarn, That's then move back without really the penguin cool. seeing you. Use two full jumps and a dive to get onto the power box. If you're having trouble doing this, you can also jump then double jump from the wall onto it. Jump off of the power box around the corner to the next section, then get to the end. Be super careful around this penguin right before the end, as it can see you through the wall and floor and catch you. Oh, that's very fair. Mash through some text, and once you get to the passport picture, you can use your mouse to get to the done button faster. Mash through some other text and collect the timepiece. The next act is picture perfect. This is a very route based level, so just follow what's done here. When wall running up this wall, make sure you're somewhat close to the left, as you can get stuck on some geometry and you'll have to try again. After falling here, try and land on the endorsement so you don't have to tech and then jump to it. After getting the second yarn, you can dive onto the spring and get over to the top of the building. If you dive boost through the last picture and onto the endorsement, then climb up the fountain and hit the dog fast enough, oh. you can instantly go to Max Diva on the counter. Oh, this is pretty difficult cool. and requires you to be fast, but it saves time over the counter ticking all the way up. If you finish the second endorsement and the counter isn't ticking up to Max, you miss something somewhere and will have to find another group of penguins to talk to or another picture to take. Once you get the timepiece, hold A through what plays afterwards to get to the menu. Sometimes, you might get something on the screen that says a rare sticker has been found. This shows up because you hadn't seen this dialog box in the last 12 hours or so, and have collected 5 timepieces in your current run. To stop this from showing up, after any long break in a run, go to a file that has more than 5 timepieces, and collect timepieces until the rare sticker notification shows up. This only loses 4 seconds, but it's really annoying. After Picture mm. Perfect, move towards okay. a group of breakable boxes to the left. You can wedge yourself between some and break all of them in one brewer, saving some time. <clears throat> move towards the first time rift of the run, the gallery. This rift is fairly straightforward like others. Wall jump up the wall and move through the rotating segments. When you get to the second rotating platform, you can DSJ off of it and vault over the wall. If you can't get the DSJ here, double jump and dive into the wall, then run up it until you see the checkpoint notification. Fall and you'll respawn next to the balloons. Dive boost or jump into the balloons, then get to the end of the rift. You can use some DSJs to get through this faster as well. After collecting the timepiece, you'll be put into the roulette section. You can go back to hub as soon as this pops up in every rift that you do. A good indication as to when to pause is the music starting up. After getting the rift's huh. timepiece, you'll spawn back at the Battle I of the Birds know. telescope. Move out of here towards the central section of the spaceship and into the next chapter, Subcon Forest. If Roombi, the sentient Roomba, is anywhere nearby on the way here, hit it and collect the yarn. If you don't get it now, you'll have to get it later, Rumbi. but if it's too far out of the way, yeah. just ignore it. Hold left after you boop here to the telescope and begin the first it act, Contractual so Obligations. Cute. Starting off the act, dive boost and slide down the slope. As you begin to get pulled into the bag, use the boop emote. There's a fairly large amount of time that you can do this to get the trick. Oh. If done correctly, you'll fall out of the bag and be invisible. In this state, you can run, sprint, and jump, but can't dive or double jump. Sprint and jump over to the next section. Oh. 
Once you become visible again, you still won't be able to dive, so keep that in mind. If you happen to get stuck by doing something the game doesn't want you to have done, you can just boop again and get unstuck. You can grab the cherry, light it, and throw it towards the ice here too. If done very fast, you can take the painting over to the next section, but I usually don't in the interest of time. You need to get over to the snatcher dialogue near the fire before this sound effect plays. So you can skip the first snatcher dialogue. Make sure that you hear the sound effect during the text by the fire though, as if you go too fast and clear the text boxes before this, you'll still get stuck in the original dialogue. If you did not skip the dialogue or miss the bag skip in general, sign the contract on the right, mash through the text, and get the first painting into the fire. After this, just get the other paintings into the fire as well. You can get the second painting stuck in the tree stump, then jump on it and throw the painting into the fire to get to the third one faster. Once all the paintings are burned, jump up to the chest and get the yarn. Mash through the snatcher dialogue and get the timepiece. Get sucked the next timepiece is Subconwell. If you did the bag skip properly last act, enter through contractual obligations. If not, enter through Subconwell. These take you to the same place anyways, so don't worry too much about it. Move up and burn the two paintings. Before the cutscene, move over towards the skeleton in the swamp. You can jump on a branch halfway between to avoid getting pulled under. After you get the yarn, jump through the tree on the right to get to the two wooden walls. Get on top of the right one with a DSJ or a double jump dive, then jump to the tree on your right and double jump into the next yarn. If you're having trouble doing this, you can get on top of the skull from the ice wall and jump to the second yarn from there. Collect the three pieces of yarn on the way to the well. To skip climbing the Dweller Bell's platforms, you can dive into the gap between this tree and the well. Hold back left very soon after diving, then canceling the dive as soon as possible. If you miss this, you might not be holding back left soon enough, canceling the dive too late, or most often diving too late. It is also dependent on your FPS. It's basically impossible to do this if you're in this area and getting less than 40 FPS. To check this, you can use the developer console, enter enable cheats, then stat FPS. You can also try and boost your FPS by changing your graphics settings or resolution. If you find that you just can't get this, the platforms lose about 6 to 8 seconds. Upon entering the well, hold up and dive boost into the room in front of you. Grab the cherry on the left and break the ice up ahead. Open the chest, this will give you the hook shot. You can jump on the lid of the chest to the hook directly above. Use this to swing around up top and get the yarn there. Jump over to the platform with the button on it, then sprint into it and jump off before you lose control of Hackid. You'll land on the ground to save a bit of extra time. Move back into the main area into the next room. Dive boost over to the hook in the middle and jump up. You'll be able to get pushed up the rope in the middle. Do this twice, then hook shot to the left hook. Then hold right, jump off, and hook shot to the right hook. From here, jump towards where you're facing and climb up the geometry on the wall. Go left up this, double jump, then wall jump to the next hook. You probably won't be able to see this, but you can hear when you're about to hook shot to it. Once on here, jump towards the end, grab the cherry, and make the ice hat after you break the ice. During the loading screen, you can hold straight up and mash the dive button to get a little bit of distance before the timepiece spawns. Collect the timepiece and continue. If you didn't get the bag skip and have the contract for the well, you can exit to hub after you see the timepiece number go to 9 in the bottom left corner, saving a bit of time in the animation. You'll be doing this for the other timepieces that have a contract attached to them as well. The next timepiece is Mail Delivery Service. If you're playing on a controller, you'll probably want to switch to using keyboard and mouse for just this timepiece to have faster movement while aiming. Dive and slide down towards Snatcher, then mash through the text and open the box. You'll get the scooter here, so get on that and begin the route as follows. For the fourth shot, you can line up on- Oh wait, I just got a Discord notification. Oh. Um. It's just for random server, okay. A texture on the ground here to get two counted minions in one shot, though this is somewhat difficult. Don't worry about missing this, as there is a very easy backup later. Get the next two minions and enter the snatcher trap on the ground. Before the dialogue, you can shoot at another minion off to the left, though don't waste too much time aiming here. Pick the contract on the right and continue with the route. If you miss the double shot, Hit the minion on top of the tree here. Return back to Snatcher, deliver the mail to the minion right next to him, and jump towards where the timepiece will spawn. 
If done correctly, you'll get the timepiece while the contract pops up. Switch your badge back to the hookshot and exit to the hub. If you miss the timepiece, switch the badge back anyways as you'll need it later. Enter Toilet of Doom for the next timepiece, Queen Vanessa's Manor. Dive boost back and left along the dirt path and cross the bridge, skipping the snatcher trap. Move through to the bell and platform all the way through. You can skip every ice wall by just going over it. Huh. It's kind of cool. Once you pass the last one, dive boost all the way to and around the left side of the manor, entering the basement. In the basement, you can't use hat abilities or dive, so just jump through as this is faster than just walking, skipping the text when the minion appears. Enter the door and get the yarn between the barrels. Jump one gap above you, crouch, and enter the <coughs> secret passage to the end. Once you're here, you can jump on the door frame on the right of you, then double jump towards the chest to skip a cutscene trigger. Open the chest and collect the timepiece. The next rift is the pipe rift. Enter Queen Vanessa's manor and move towards the pipe on the left side of where you spawned in. Where Enter the rift and move through the level. All the wrong acts. It's just funny to me. With these hook shots, you can dive, then cancel into the next one, then land on the third gear, sprint jump off, and get to the third hook without waiting a cycle. It's important to cancel your dive before going into the hook shots, as not doing so will lead you to getting way less height than you should be. If you miss anything in this section and fall, you can SDJ from the checkpoint to get to the first hook without having to wait any cycles. Dive boost and hookshot through the rest of the rift and grab the timepiece. Enter contractual obligations for the next rift, the village. Go backwards and dive boost towards the hookshot. Again, dive and cancel so you get the most height out of the hookshot. Grab the next hook and move to the right. Dive boost through the yarn here and land on the mushroom on the ground. Dive boost over to the tree stump, then double jump dive off of it onto the fence. You won't want to input anything as you vault over the top of the fence so you don't jump all the way over it. Move all the way towards the rift, then double jump dive onto the wall, starting from the center beam as it's a bit higher up. This jump is pretty difficult, you need to get two full height jumps and dive at the top of the second jump. If you're having trouble with this, you can double jump and homing attack into the spider near the wall, then jump dive towards the rift. If you miss that as well, you can do another strat of homing attacking the three spiders on the right, then sprint jump and diving to the rift. Starting the rift, jump and hit the bell. After this, it's mostly just a straight shot to the end. You can use some DSJs if you want to get over some gaps faster. At the second dweller bell, hit it, then jump on top of it, then double jump dive into the timepiece. You don't have to hit the bell, but it's a safer strat that can save you if you overshoot the timepiece at the cost of barely any time. The final timepiece in Subcon is the Toilet of Doom boss. Dive boost forward all the way to the hookshots, then dive into the arena. Once the fight starts, wait for the toilet to jump four times, then dive over to the upper right. When it spits out the bubbles, get between it and the wall so that the bubble with the cherry in it doesn't need to travel far before popping. Oh, Throw it, the jump over the waves on the ground, and hookshot into it. Quickly get back on the hookshot and dive behind the toilet where it spawns next, once again getting the toilet to spit the bubble at the wall. If you miss this, you can still get the cherry, it'll just be a little longer. You can sprint with the cherry if you pick it up then hold the sprint button as well. After hitting the toilet for the second time, you can once again hookshot back towards it. This time, land on top of the toilet. By doing this, you can often force the toilet to start the next phase a bit quicker. Oh. Hook shot into the cherry and throw it at the toilet, cool. then repeat again. These cherries have a huge hit radius, so as long as you are on the opposite end of the arena as the toilet, <laughs> just throw the cherry in its direction and you'll hit it. Once you throw the yeah. second cherry at the toilet, line yourself up with the left side of this panel on the floor. It's the darkest shade of gray and spans across two rows of the panels. Okay. Once the toilet goes into the pool and the camera moves, you can run over to this intersection of panels. From here, you'll hear four sound effects, the beam's going to charge up the cherry. A bit after the fourth, hold straight up. If timed and lined up correctly, you'll walk on top of the cherry and push the toilet out of bounds, doing a quick kill. There are a few things that can go wrong here. For example, if you hold up too early, you might not push the toilet far enough, if at all. If you're too late, you can get stuck in the cherry. A more thorough guide explaining this setup and quick kill is in the route document that I mentioned earlier. B 
Because you have a contract for this timepiece, you can jump where the timepiece spawns and exit to hub before the full animation ends. If you miss the timepiece, you can pull up the emote menu before the contract menu appears. This will still let you move and grab the timepiece so you can get to the hub faster as well. If you get the timepiece and unpause, the game will look like it's frozen. If this happens, just wait a bit. You might need to press start to get it unfrozen. So long as the in-game time in the top right is green, and your auto splitter has moved on, you've gotten the timepiece. If you didn't get the Roomby yarn before, make sure you get it before returning to Mafia Town. Enter the golden vault for the next timepiece. To start, jump forward and dive onto the roof, then dive boost on the gutter ahead. Get the ticket on top of the tightrope. If you miss the dive boost, just use the umbrella trampolines to get up to it. Move forward towards the statue. You can slide off of its arm to get momentum onto the balloon, then into the yarn. Jump on the umbrella and move backwards to collect the next ticket, then dive boost forward. Jump near the ice platform towards the chest and grab the yarn there. Continue forward for the next ticket and yarn. Loop back around, get into this ice platform, use it, and dive boost around the left side. Aren't From here, right stand around the top of the sloped roof, hold the ice hat, and let go of the hat ability button before you hit the gutter. You should get a lot of momentum going towards the last ticket. If you don't get as much speed or height, you can use the trees or golden umbrella to get here. Go to the ice platform below, open the vault, and collect the timepiece. Launch. I actually have the image for like starting this act as my PFP on Discord. Vault again, then turn around, dive across this roof, and enter the next rift, sewers. This rift is fairly easy, just climb up the moving platforms and get to the end. You can sprint jump or DSJ to the large rotating block to skip the second wall section. Dive boost across this, then vault up the gears to the end. Unlock and enter Heating Up Mafia Town. Mash through the text, then dive to the left onto the tightrope. Jump to the first faucet and hit it twice, with a little bit of a weight in between the hits. This is how every faucet will be closed. For the next faucets, you'll be playing the floor is lava, but even more so. The intent here is to not land on any ground the game can spawn you on, as you'll be warping back to the start platform a few times. Jump oh, to the golden umbrella, actually, then the trash bags. Really Jump onto the next faucet and close it. I was about to say, this whole level is the floor's lava. To do a stuck warp, as these are called, you'll want to get stuck under something while not moving. So the game thinks you're stuck and sends you back to the most recent valid ground that you were on. You can do this under the scaffolding a bit past the faucet. This if you miss the umbrella or trash bags and land on spawnable ground, which is pretty much anything other than those two. A backup you can do is to jump over and dive boost across the black market tent and keep going towards the next faucet over the lava instead of what's done later. Once you warp back up top, run over to the top of the staircase and dive on the roof to get over to the next faucet. The gutter is valid ground to spawn on, so make sure you slide across the roof. Close it, then use the hookshot and tree to jump to the falling platforms. Ideally, you don't want to take the heart pawn on top of the tree, as you'll be death warping in a bit. Close this faucet, then fall under the faucet, down to the lava underneath the faucet head, and do another stuck warp. When you get back to the top of the staircase, jump next to the ice platform and dive boost forward a bit. Use the ice hat to slide down the roof here to get momentum, similar to what was done in Golden Vault. There are a few ways to get to the faucet. I usually just hook shot onto the platform and jump off, though you can use the balloon to get there faster. You'll want to be at one health when you close the faucet, as you can then fall off and death warp up to the start platform right after you close it. Jump off to the right after this, close the last faucet, stuck warp one more time under it, enter the cannon, and grab the timepiece. Dude, the strats in this run are crazy. Enter Barrel Battle for the last rift in Mafia Town, the Bazaar. Jump onto the right wall, then double jump and vault over the left wall. Sprint straight down, then jump and dive boost into the Bazaar Rift. This rift is extremely straightforward. 
The only thing to note here is that you can dive and gain a lot of speed once the slope block turns around, and you can dive boost on the floating platforms after this. That's... Get over to the end and collect the timepiece. Did the movement in the throne is so cool. The final timepiece in Mafia Town is cheating the race. Unlock it, and acknowledge that you don't have all of the key items for it. The game wants you to have the time stop hat here, but it's possible to do it without. Collect the yarn next to the fireplace and talk to the Mafia goon to start the race. Make the dweller hat as the cutscene plays. A route here is as follows. Dive boost straight forward twice, then dive on the rock to gain momentum, boosting when you hit the ground. Run up the stairs, then dive boost twice and jump into the hookshot. Dive boost after this, then cancel a dive as you get to the opposite slope. You should get a decent amount of momentum here, and might have to tech as you hit the ground. Dive into the space between the dirt and the bridge, dive boost here, then dive and slide all the way down to the railing into the timepiece. It's worth noting that each attempt of this takes That's about 30 really seconds, cool. so it may be useful to look into other timepieces if you just can't get this after 3 or 4 tries but is very worth learning and practicing the movement for, as it's a fast timepiece and has a very easy to get yarn in it. Unlock the telescope for Alpine Skyline, directly under the Mafia Town entrance. Instead of going to the telescope, however, move through the tunnel and get through the dweller block to get to the last rift, the lab. This rift is once again very straightforward, just make sure you don't get hit by any of the birds, as they can knock you off of platforms very easily. After you collect the lab's timepiece, you'll spawn up at Mafia Town. Once again, go towards the lab rift, except this time unlock the timepiece for the metro on the left. Use okay, the ice so hat through the manhole and through. enter the free room. Use the vacuums and trains to travel through the level as shown. You can do a DSJ here to skip the blue train, but if you miss, just wall jump up it and continue. For this jump, you can jump into the left wall, then double jump dive to vault over. Take the last blue train to the end, use a brewer and two hits to take out the cat holding the timepiece, then collect it. Mash through the Empress's text, then dive boost straight and then right through the tunnel. Get over to this railing and do a boop clip. Because the boop emote is pretty broken, as seen before with the bag and subcon, yeah. you can also use it to just clip through walls. To do this, you'll want to stand on a grabbable surface, such as this fence, jump up and slightly backwards, and use the boop emote before you grab the ledge. Why is boop if done correctly, okay? you'll boop and slowly slide down the wall while it looks like you're grabbing a ledge. When you press the jump button to vault up, you'll clip through the wall. And why is it Do so around boop? this texture in the wall while also not holding any directions. Once you're in the wall, you can move forward out of bounds. Navigate forward out of bounds until you get to the giant blue and white cube. Next, boop clip again around the second white bar Hold forward after clipping and collect the timepiece. Boop oh. clipping isn't the most difficult technique, okay. but it may take a bit of practice to get the movement and muscle memory down, so just keep trying until you can get it. Exit to the hub as soon as you can after you get this timepiece. Activate the telescope and enter the yellow overpass manhole. Once you load in, jump backwards onto the spring, then on your way up, Turn the camera behind you and jump dive towards the trains. This jump and wall run is somewhat inconsistent, but most of the time you'll either end up on the train or in front of it. If you fall to the ground where the manhole is, you can jump on the back of the bench on the right side and then double jump dive to the trains. Once you get on the train, jump to the train above that. Ride this train over to the pink wall and jump on it. If you fall off the pink wall and are on the absolute ground of the station, the best backup is to jump from the boxes to the pink arch, then back on the pink wall. If you do fall all the way to the bottom, if you don't want to reset, your best bet is probably to do the green clean station timepiece, covered later. Turn your camera behind you again, then jump, double jump dive, onto the train once again over you. Take this train to the timepiece. It's worth noting that for all of these trains, the back car, identified by some red markings, is very unsafe to jump on, as vaulting on it can easily clip you through it. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you jump on trains. 
Again, exit to hub when you get this timepiece. Okay. For the next timepiece, the one in Pink Paw Station, start by doing everything you just did, except don't collect the timepiece at the end. Instead, run off the left side next to the wall. You'll warp up to the Pink Paw area. Use the vacuums to get to the top, then, avoiding the trains, jump over to this timepiece. Don't yeah. exit to hub here, just mash through the Empress's text. For the final timepiece in the Metro, Green Clean Station, leave the jewelry shop and go left. Fall in the mud to activate the vacuum, then sprint into it to move up. Go through the next vacuums until you land on this wall. From here, dive boost or sprint across the top of it and jump up to the platform with the birds. You can dive boost or run into the vacuum. Please do not climb on the holograms, because you can Here to collect the timepiece. Exit to hub after this as you've collected all 25 timepieces. As you exit to the hub, you'll take control of Mustache Girl in the spaceship. After some text, dive over and jump up to the vault. Open it and wait through the cutscene. As you gain control of Hat Kid again, use the spring and make your way back to the main part of the spaceship. Go over to and unlock the finale telescope, right above the subcon entrance. You can boot during this cutscene to get into the attic faster so you don't have to wait a cycle on the elevator. Use the Dweller Hat to hit the first button, then you can jump dive into the second one or use the Ice Hat. Break the last box with the Brewer and enter the Finale Telescope. To start the finale, sprint jump all the way up to the door at the top. Enter this, run up the stairs, and enter the next area. For a majority of the finale, you'll just be dive boosting and jumping over any obstacles. For now, you can really just make up movement that works well for you, as it's pretty linear. Just try and fit in dive boosts when possible. In the starting segment, you can take damage in the lava to warp a bit. Here, yep. and here. The only other major thing to note here is it's possible to skip fighting the owl. At some point, you did it. I did expect. I did extract the files that should be in documents. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for telling me that. Ah. Uh, yep. Uh. No problem. Where is hat lag? I don't understand why it's not there. in this section. You can double jump dive from the upper left corner to the fence in front of you. Don't press a direction when you vault on top of it, then jump to the area with the hammers and continue. Once you reach Mustache Girl all the way at the end, the final fight begins. The first phase has you hitting her five times in total. It's possible to hit her a few times in one attack, so just mash your attack button until she gets away. When Mustache Girl throws the timepieces at you, if you're not already at 4 hits, wait for her to land for the chance of getting multiple hits. If you are at 4 hits, just use a brewer to hit her. After the 5th hit, you'll be in a black void. Avoid the timepieces and move on to the next phase. In this phase, Mustache Girl has 3 attacks. She can teleport around, throw timepieces, or fire a beam in the middle. She'll do 2 sets of each of these attacks. So for example, if you get the teleport and then the timepiece, you'll be guaranteed the beam third. After the sixth hit, she'll move to the edge of the arena and fire a beam. You can throw a brewer at her without getting too close to move on to the next phase faster, but there's an annoying bug that makes you get hit very often while charging a brewer, which is pretty hard to avoid. So just stay at range where the brewer will hit and you won't make Mustache Girl move, and you'll move on. If you can't get this brewer skip, just dive over to her a few times until the next dialogue comes up. In the Mafia Ball phase, Mustache Girl will first do a timepiece throw. Hit her with a brewer, then dive into the Mafia Ball to hit the beam attack. Do this another time, and the next phase will begin. 
Here, she'll go into a shield. Wait a bit for her to land, let her hit you as it's a bit faster, and then get through some more dialogue. This part is simple, just throw the cherry, hit her, and repeat. Like before, you can mash the umbrella hit to possibly get a double hit. If done correctly, you'll get anywhere from 1 to 4 cherry throws on her before the next phase, but this is something left to RNG. Once Mustache Girl says enough, the last phase begins. There's some dialogue and a long cutscene, and from here on out you basically can't die, but everything just gets way more chaotic. The attacks are the same as you've seen, just a bit faster. After 8 hits in this phase, you'll finish the fight. After a cutscene and the timepiece cluster moving into place, run up to it and dive into it to finish the run. Time will automatically stop here, so you're done. I really enjoy this game's speedrun and the game overall. The movement is very responsive and the controls are tight, so there are very few instances of me thinking the game cheated me out of something that I should have gotten. The tricks in this route aren't too difficult in my opinion, but it's extremely unlikely that you'll be able to get world record using it. There's a faster route that uses multiple glitches not covered here, which is something that I'll probably look into soon. Speaking of which, my current PB is 42 minutes and 42 seconds with a good amount of time to improve. I'll be looking into faster strats okay. to get that- Well. I'll put this on my second monitor, so I won't be able to read chat, um, but let's, let's try and do a speedrun, baby. Oh yeah, um, I know I won't be able to read chat, but what do you guys think of my background? Okay, so, is there a new file? If you're using in the general- Why? No. 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 Controller settings. Once you gain control, oh, dive through thing? the tunnel and jump up left after the exiting heck? the second door. That's so Why does it think the Doka thing is the current video? Is my computer so stupid? <laughs> this is what skill looks like. So, Mafia Town. So, here. Why? Why? They jump over here. No. So, jump out here. And then jump over to this chest. that right.
press the interact button, B on an Xbox controller or E on the keyboard, and get to the next part. Once the camera turns around and you regain control, jump and dive boost towards the bottom right of where you're standing. Dive boost again into the beginning of the first act, Welcome to Mafia Town. Upon loading in, you'll want to climb up the right wall behind you. From here, you can go between the wall and wooden beam to jump up across the gap where the chest is. Open the chest and get your first yarn. Going around the corner, jump over the gap into the main area. You can dive on the sloped wooden platform and stay in the diving state to get a bit more momentum. Get the next yarn that's between some crates, and move around the left side of the fountain. You'll want to collect the pawns here, as they're the currency you need to open up new levels. You'll need to collect all five of them around the fountain before collecting the timepiece. After getting the three or four around the left side, move into the Mafia member. This will start the fight with him. Hold up and hit him three times, okay, so once more it. to end the fight. Um... During the timepiece spawning animation, you can craft your first hat, the sprint hat. Pause, move right to the hat menu, right twice to the sprint hat, make it, and unpause. You'll make the hat during the cutscene, not losing any time. Equip the hat out of the menu by pressing A, pick up any of the fountain pawns that you missed, and collect the first timepiece. Upon loading back into the spaceship, hold a bit of a down left angle and mash the interact button. This will activate the Mafia Town telescope. You can use the boop emote during this cutscene, right as the camera. Okay, so. Hold down. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, no. If that's. No, 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 no. So, for this level, we just... Okay, so, we collect two games. Our snaps to the telescope, and it begins to spawn. It'll effectively take priority of the animation Hatkit is currently doing, and when it's done, you'll be able to move during the cutscene. You won't have too much time, but you can make some ground towards the telescope. This is the case for all telescope cutscenes. Boop a bit after it starts, and you'll be able to move, in this case straight down, and you can jump dive into the telescope. Even if you don't move towards the telescope, you can cancel the animation after the cutscene ends, saving a bit of time. Go to the telescope, activate it, and select the act above Welcome to Mafia Town. If you don't have enough pawns to activate it, reset the run and go again, as you'll be making an important hat before Barrel Battle, the other available act. You should also hold A or left click through every telescope cutscene, as it makes the animations play faster and saves a lot of time throughout the run. Entering the next act, She Came From Outer Space, follow the route shown. There isn't too much to say about this, other than that we'll be getting 4 yarn to make the next hat. Going into the mud here is important, as it's necessary to begin the last part of the act. Once you get up to the Mafia Goon, I think I understand that. Let's see if I actually did it. Thank <laughs> you. 
What the? During the following cutscene, craft the brewer hat. This is used to make combat a lot faster than just the umbrella. Press B after this so you don't equip it, and begin the next sequence. You can pick up the pawns the Mafia goon drops with your umbrella to get them all at once. Move all the way through the sequence, scaring the goon each time. You'll be able to get to the places faster than he is to trigger the scaring faster. It's worth noting that you can softlock after jumping from the pipes if you reach the Mafia goon too quickly. But if you take the bit of extra time and collect the pawns, you should rarely encounter this. Once you're at the end, you can check out this intersection of planks so the time he spawns right on. Okay. So then I think I got that. It's it's slimy sp Mafia Zam I'm missing a yard. Uh Just do this off camera. Load so I can leave. Absolutely hating this. Yeah, I'm gonna play the outro now. Then I'll just leave. Let's like do a runoff camera or something. Whatever, just... I'm ending stream. Screw all this. Bye.